So we're happy to welcome back Jordan Seculo, Executive Director of American Center for Law and Justice. He's also one of President Trump's attorneys. Uh, Jordan, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Let's start, if you don't mind, with the comments that are making so many headlines from Attorney General Bill Barr. He told the Associated Press this, quote, today we have not seen fraud on a scale that could have affected a different outcome in the election. Now, as we played earlier, White House Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany clarified those comments, saying that the AG also said that a lot of people are confusing the use of the federal criminal justice system with allegations that should be made in civil lawsuits. So first, I'll have you react to all of that and, and whether or not you wish maybe Attorney General Barr would be doing more or at least not make comments. Well, I think the comment was probably uh, taken totally out of context because he thinks in a completely criminal mindset as the attorney general of the United States, these lawsuits that whether it's the Trump campaign, whether it's President Trump who's filed a lawsuit, whether it's the attorneys representing President Trump in his personal capacity like us, uh, we file in the civil court. So when we allege that there was fraud, it's not like criminal fraud. Uh, it's it's uh, you can you know you can have a civil RICO case, you have a criminal RICO case. So he talks in the words of criminal law. But I just want to point out that when he says the fraud is is not something he's seeing. If you look at the latest round of lawsuits where we have focused, and I will tell your audience and the Newsmax audience, we are working on this 24/7. It's not so much about fraud as it is illegal conduct, and there's a difference between fraud and violating the laws of the state. So that's what you saw in the lawsuit filed by President Trump uh, in Wisconsin. It is a allegation that the laws were violated by local election officials uh, in five different uh, five different cities and by the uh, elections commission at the statewide level because the laws of the state weren't followed. That then implicates uh, the Constitution because if those votes are counted it uh, and they're illegal, it implicates, it means it, it kind of uh, erases votes that were legal in Wisconsin and other states. So it arises to a federal issue. And so that is, again, it's not fraud. It's it's illegal conduct that violates the law. And that is what you're seeing there. Uh, you're also seeing that, of course, we're seeing voting machines being recounted and, and voting looked at in uh, Arizona now. A judge went from looking at just 100 of these corrected ballots. Those are ballots that come in that are a little messed up, so they try to fix them. Two out of the 100 uh, uh, went to Biden. They were supposed to go to Trump. He said, because the margins are so small in, Nevada, in uh, Arizona, they've got to expand that to now look at 2,500 of those corrected ballots. We should see the results of that in a couple of days. What's interesting, though, I mean, you know it as well as I do, we've got some states that have already certified their votes, right? Yep. And I know there were efforts in at least Pennsylvania to try to overturn that certification. Uh, what's the update on that? So here, here's the key. In Pennsylvania, there is a stay from the Supreme Court on all of the votes that came in late uh, that did not meet the, that that met that new deadline they they came up with, which a court said that the Secretary of State didn't have the power to do. Uh, Justice Alito put a stay on that, and that stay is still in effect. It's not so much about the certifications, the timelines that we're looking at. Listen, it's coming up quickly. December 8th, that is when electors are selected, and then December 14th, when they vote in most states. That is the key. And what you'll see in the Wisconsin lawsuit from President Trump, what you'll see, I think, also in a, maybe a new lawsuit in Georgia as well, is that it's about whether or not who should be making these decisions. Were these uh, elections in these states run so illegally that they should not be uh, decided necessarily by these vote tabulations that came in, which we keep getting different numbers, but instead go to the legislature, which is a constitutional option to figure out um, how things should proceed. And, of course, you know, this is all playing out in court, and we've seen some Trump lawsuits that haven't fared so well for the Trump campaign, the Trump legal sure. team, I should say. Um, but do you think with these new lawsuits being filed um, that we could see these cases being resolved at the Supreme Court level? Would it be a lower court? What are you anticipating? Ultimately, what you have to do is put enough of these cases together. So in, in Nevada... Uh, looking at the the numbers, what they're looking at there uh, in Arizona with the with the re, with the uh, expanded recount of these fixed ballots that came in uh, in uh, Wisconsin and then in Georgia and in Pennsylvania, you put those together. If you have enough cases, you can take to the Supreme Court where it is outcome determinative. 
That means that if the Supreme Court sides with our position, it would change the outcome of the election, then yes, ultimately it will be the United States Supreme Court that would make this decision. And, uh, and, but there is a lot of power at the state level. State, if state legislators want to uh, prevent that, like in Wisconsin, they have an option to do that. So, so again, it can go kind of two different paths, but the most likely path, you put enough cases together that get to the Supreme Court and they're outcome determinative. I think that's still why we have a stay in Pennsylvania on those late incoming ballots where the law was changed, to, because the court is waiting to see whether enough cases arise to the Supreme Court that will change the outcome of the election. So as your viewers now can, can uh, see very clearly, the president right. is still very engaged in this battle. So is his legal team. Yeah, clearly you are confident that these lawsuits will, uh, will go in your favor. But I'm sure you've seen as well that there are a lot of critics uh, dismissing your cases, saying there's no evidence. Even Senator Lindsey Graham made this comment uh, on Fox News last night. Here's that. Okay. I guess we don't have the sound bite there, uh, but essentially, I understand, I understand oh, we, though. I, we, I understand some of the concerns with the earlier yeah. earlier lawsuits. Though they're more difficult to prove these uh, massive fraud allegations. But what we're now seeing is very specific. You're starting to see the outcome of these lawsuits. So in Arizona, when they started doing this sample recount, they realized, wait, these corrected ballots in a state decided by so few votes weren't all done so correctly. So if two out of 100 are wrong, let's see what's wrong out of 2,500. And let's then, maybe we have to expand that too. Clark County right now, Rick Rennell and his legal team, they're looking at the, the machines uh, in Clark County. They got an order to be able to send in it, uh, people to look at the machines. In Georgia, three counties were told by a court you cannot stop, you cannot erase the data on your voting machines. That was uh, two counties that went for Biden, one county that went for Trump. It's Gwinnett and Cobb County that went for uh, Biden and uh, Cherokee County that went for Trump. So these, these are real orders in place right now, real active litigation. I understand some of the concern about some of these wild allegations that got made, but I encourage the senators, I encourage those who may be critics, look at what's actually happening in the courts. It may be making them a bit more nervous each day. And I'm not saying that about uh, Chairman Graham, but about uh, the Biden team, because these are serious allegations and they're starting to show the, that uh, the fruits of the charges and allegations that were made. Well, that is the very latest from the Trump legal team. Jordan Seculo taking the time joining us this morning. Jordan, thanks so much. Thank you. Welcome.